Welcome back to the KDPG Sunday edition. This morning we're talking about the uneasy relationship between the president and the press. We are joined now by D. Raja, local business executive and chair of the Republican Committee of Allegheny County, and Dr. Shannon Smithy, professor of political science at Westminster College in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania, just uh, starting uh, the fall semester. So good luck to you with that, and welcome to both of you. Uh, Raja, let me start with you. What's the, uh, what do you make of your president after eight months? After eight months, uh, when you look at uh, how the stock market's doing, how the jobs are, are up by a million jobs uh, since the beginning of the year, consumer sentiment is up. So those are some of the things that uh, President Trump said, you know, as part of his campaign. Um, and I think those are, are, are coming true. So he's got the jobs there. I think there's less uh, illegal immigrants coming over, talking about safety. So when you look at it, you know, there's style and there's results. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the results, I think, um, uh, you know, I see positive, very positive results. So um, when you see the president go at the media as he did Tuesday night, last Tuesday night in Phoenix, what do you think? Are you, are you cheering him on? It's, a, it's, a, it's like a style. And I think you heard, uh, you know, Ryan talk about, you, you know, uh, that you know his style is different than President Trump's style. Uh, the one thing with uh, President Trump is you see, everybody knows what he's thinking, whether it's on his own side, the Republican side, or others. And in some sense, you know, there's a freshness with that. Like you, you, you just know what he's thinking, good or bad. You, you, you tend to hear what it is. It may, you know, you could say it's not uh, politically correct to talk that way, but that's been his style from day one, mm -hmm. and at least he hasn't changed. Right, uh, but you are a Trump supporter. You may you continue to support the president. Yes, I continue, as a, and especially as a chair, I can tell you this okay. for the local party. Yeah, the base is just as energized with them today as they were on election night. Okay, so when you're watching him attack uh, New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, uh, are you are you right there with them? Do you think it's, they're like, fake? like I said, it's a, it's a it's a matter of style. No, you but know, do, being you, a do you agree with that they're fake? That they're fake news that should not be trusted, and that they're that the national media, many of them, are enemies of the American. I think media. President Trump has his view of how he should be represented, and the media has their perspective of what it is. Clearly, that's the disconnect out there, and and it's and, and as far as uh, you know, who's exactly right or who's exactly wrong, I think you know that's for the for the audience to decide. But, what but from my side, my style, my think, my style is you know, like I said, being a CEO, you know, mine's more about being empathetic and. And, and getting the consensus. Yeah. It's a different style. I'm, I'm sorry, just to, to try to put a period of this. Do you think that the, he gets fair coverage or unfair coverage on um, national media? I think it's a, I think it, it's a mix of both. I think sometimes what he says, because of all the stuff that he says, he's is not, not complaining that. about a mix, though. He's complaining about what he sees as overwhelmingly negative coverage. Uh, Do you agree or disagree? Um, like I said, you know, president's view is the president's view. And uh, and I, I think he you know he wants to communicate, and that's the beauty with him is he's communicating directly through Twitter and Facebook and okay, stuff. Okay, all right. How about this? Do you read the New York Times and the Washington Post? Um, I read them on online. Do you do, uh, do you believe what you read? Um, you think it's the truth? Um, I, I there are parts of it that's the version of New York Times, and the other are parts of it that oh, Trump oh, disagrees. Oh, oh. So I have to look at both and say, is this really what was was meant? For, I'll give you an example. Like President Trump says, he has a hundred million social media viewers, right? The social media, uh, you know, audience. Uh, that's what he says. When you look at the, the analysis, they say, okay, you've got 36 million on Twitter, this and that. And, and they say, okay, if you consider his, uh, his POTUS account, maybe it add, adds up to um, 100 million. So the question is, who's right? Is, is the president right in saying it's 100 million counting that? Or, is the, or is, the, is the media right in saying he only has 36 or 40 or 50 million? Do you believe what you read in the New York Times? Um, I believe, you know, what's reported, I, I believe, but there's, like I said, there's a, there's a viewpoint there. there. There's a viewpoint that you, you take, there's data and there's an interpretation of the viewpoint. So it's just a viewpoint that, uh, that varies. The data doesn't change, it's the viewpoint that varies. Uh, well, hold it. If you say okay. the data hasn't changed, then how about this notion of alternative facts? Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's an interpretation of... of Is of, there an alternative to the, to the notion that the sun is 93 million miles away from the Earth? Oh, those are facts. Is a fact is no, a fact. No alternative fact to that. Uh, regarding the sun, if the number you told me is, is what it is, then that's what it is. Can you conceive of any uh, any so-called fact in which there's an alternative? In the case of the sun being away? No. Uh, a <laughs> squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yeah, uh, but but you're not like talking that. about those, Dave. You're talking about things that are like I gave you the classic example. Does he have a hundred million social media viewers, or is it fifty million? That's the kind of stuff you're talking about. It's not black or white. Dr. Smithy, do you believe what you read in the New York Times? 
For the most part, yes. How about up at your campus, up at Westminster? What's the, what's the view of, of President Trump up there? Um, I know this would, you well, we had a student election in the fall, and Hillary won by one vote. Hmm. Um, so it was it was close. Mm -hmm. um, there are students who definitely believe in uh, President Trump. Um, we had a couple of kids come to campus last fall wearing Make America Great Camps. Um, and we have a lot of students who think uh, President Trump is a disaster. Um, and we try to respect their opinions, but to get them to think about why their opinion might be justified by the facts. Um, and to try to teach them how to sort out what's a reasonable supposition or assertion um, and what's not. So. The Sun and the Pythagorean Theorem are probably not things about which reasonable people are going to disagree. However, uh, whether one has, his behavior has been characterized accurately by the press is uh, something that, um, despite the fact that I think the president is very thin-skinned, more so than a typical president, um, that one could be reasonably uh, interested in disagreeing with. But by definition, a characterization is, is not uh issue of fact, it's an issue of opinion. Of but trying to decide whether there's enough scientific evidence, enough reliable empirical evidence to support an assertion for which we don't absolutely know the truth, I mean, I think that global warming is happening. I think there's enough scientific evidence to suggest that global warming is happening. But because we can't rerun history and decide to have the 20th century without carbon emissions, we can't absolutely know using the experimental method. It doesn't mean the data doesn't primarily support the theory. Um, but reasonable people could disagree about exactly when the polar ice caps are likely to uh, go away. Does that mean that the evidence suggests that they're not likely to be shrinking? No. And that's where you can say that that's an unreasonable use of evidence. Ken, did you expect the uh, geometry and atmospheric physics to be part of this conversation? No, but I think it's interesting <laughs> that we're there. And isn't the main question, not to, not to get too deep into it, isn't the main question about climate change how much human activity is contributing to it and whether you think that's the dominant cause of it? Do you believe it is? Um, I do believe so because I don't think that um, as many scientists giving me as much climatic and geographic, uh, geological information um, are incorrect. Uh, but you have to trust to an extent in expertise. Right. So President Trump's EPA administrator does not believe, will not say that human activity is the primary cause. Uh, the president has called it a hoax, as, you, as I'm sure you know. Uh, do you, what are your thoughts on climate change? Um, when he pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord, you know, from, from the business side as a CEO, I saw the business side, you know, the effect of it, meaning the number of jobs being lost in manufacturing. And sometimes it wasn't a fair playing field because uh, my understanding is China didn't have to abide by the same rules as us till like maybe 2020 or so. So I think when I look at it back to the question of from an economy, which is, you know, growing jobs, uh, safety of the American people, you know, I, I, I think those are all adding into his overall theme of putting America first, getting Americans to work, keeping them safer. I wanted to interject something that the professor said um, really uh, uh, sparked my interest. I think that the question of, of the day and of the year is President Trump. But the question of the times is expertise. And whether there is, regardless of President Trump, whether he's a product of it or a cause of it, it's the, it's the attack on expertise. Part of it's an attack on elitism, elitism to be sure. But generally speaking, uh, all expertise is under, is under attack, whether people should be vaccinated whether there's this or that. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, I, I find that very disturbing. I mean, I'm an educator, and so I believe in the power of reason um, and empirical evidence to get you to a better solution and a better understanding. Uh, but one of the things that we're learning from the neuroscience and cognitive psychology research recently is that uh, being confronted with evidence which proves you wrong will often make you believe the thing that is incorrect that much more intensely. It is as if psychologically we circled the wagons against information. Um, and the more uh, accurate and uh, sort of insurmountable the pile of correct information is, the more some people don't want to believe so it. So if I were to tell some of these people that the Pirates are going to win the National League pennant, uh, are not going to win the National League pennant, they would even more to be even more solidly behind the notion that the Bucks are going to the World Series. It could well happen, yeah. yeah. Um, that's unfortunate. I mean, I have, I have a lot of uh, right-wing friends on Facebook. I don't just friend people that, uh, that share my ideological perspective. Um, and so um, one of them said to me last week, I don't care about your facts. 
And, I, and, and they're not my facts. They are, they're not things I made up. One of the things that I like still about arguing on Facebook, though it is a giant time suck, is that I learn about other people's perspectives and it keeps me on my toes. There are an enormous amount of people in the late 1940s and early 50s who believe that they heard about the Pearl Harbor attack during a Chicago Cubs baseball game. Sure, in December. Absolutely. Yeah. On that note, we'll have to leave it. Uh, <laughs> thank you both very much. Enjoyed it. We'll be back thank with you. some final thoughts in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you.